Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095, Basic Algebra. This is section 8.6. We're going to look at solving systems of equations in three variables. In the previous sections up to this point, we dealt with systems of equation in two variables. But now we're going to look at uh, systems in three variables. Now what three variables represents? Now two variables represents lines, x and y. And we know we worked with linear equations before, and we know that that represents lines. But when we deal with three variables, we're actually dealing with planes instead of lines. And if we think of a plane as like a sheet of paper, if we can imagine these lines as coming in or out of the board, we're going to look at where they intersect as a single point. But because we have three dimensions, maybe we have an x, a y, and a z plane, that z plane would be the one that comes in or out of the board. Now, we've defined consistent and inconsistent before. Uh, consistent means there is a solution. And inconsistent essentially means there is no single solution. Now, if we want to define the different types of consistent systems of three variables that we'll see, is we'll see something of this nature, where three planes intersect at a single point. And we illustrate that point just like we would in two dimensions, x, y. But now we have a z variable. So it's not an ordered pair. Maybe we could call it an ordered set, x, y, and z. Some other types of consistent uh, values where we'll have is we'll have three planes, but two of the planes are dependent, which means maybe one lies right on top of the other. So instead of intersecting at a single point, they intersect along a single plane. And maybe if I uh, draw this in three dimensions here, and hopefully we can see that illustration, they actually intersect across the line. And that would be an infinite number of solutions. So infinite solutions is still consistent, because there is values that make it true. And then the last form of consistent is where maybe we have three planes, one on top of the other. Think about like three sheets of paper all laying flat on top of each other. They're actually touching everywhere about that plane or about that piece of paper. So they, that, too, would have infinite solutions. So here we have one solution, which would be x, y, z. Here we'd have the solution, which would be the equation of a line. And here we have infinite solutions, which would be a single equation in three variables. Now, inconsistent, what's happening there is if we can imagine these lines as coming out of the uh, plane of the board as planes. Here, this one, these two lines are parallel, or these two planes are parallel, which means they'll never intersect. Well, these two planes never intersecting means we're not going to find a single solution or infinite solutions. There is no one solution that solves this system. Sometimes we'll have planes that intersect each other. These two planes intersect here. These two planes intersect here. And these two planes would intersect there. But there is not one place where all three planes intersect together. That's what we define as inconsistent. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Algebraically speaking, this is what we would have. We have 2x minus 3y plus z equals 5. That's a linear equation in three variables. Here we have x plus y plus z equals 0, another linear equation in three variables. 4x plus 2y plus 4z equals 4 and our third equation in three variables. Now, one thing that you should really pay close attention to is to assess every value's coefficient. One thing I notice about this last line is the coefficients 4, 2, 4, and 4 have a common factor. If we can take out a common factor, it's going to simplify this equation and make the coefficients a little bit easier for us to work with. So that's the first thing I'm going to recognize. Just pay close attention to these uh, coefficients. Now, if I can simplify this, I'm going to do so. I'm going to just take a 2 out of every term. Because it is an equation, what I do to one side, I can do to the other and not change its value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 2 out of all these terms. This would be 2x if I divide out a 2. This would be just y if I divide out a 2. This would be 2z. If I divide out a 2, 
And this would be 2 if I divide out a 2. Now, you've noticed we have smaller coefficients. So I am essentially just simplified that line. I didn't change its value because what I did to one side, I did to the other. But now my coefficients are smaller. Now, to solve a system of equations, we want to generally use the elimination method. And to do that, we recall that if we can get our coefficients to be the same value of opposite sign, we can just add them, the term we use for elimination, addition method, we can add them to eliminate a variable. Now, the key to this is you have to choose two of the equations to eliminate a variable. Then you have to choose two different equations and eliminate the same variable. That is key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these coefficients and say, you know what? It would be really easy to eliminate the z because they each have a coefficient of 1. I just have to change the sign of 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the right here. And one thing that will help you with systems in three variables is to be very organized with your work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this equation by a negative 1 so that this will be a negative z, and that's a positive z. So they'll cancel out when I add them together. So I'm just going to put right on this line a negative 1 and rewrite the equations over here. I have 2x minus 3y plus z equals 5. If I multiply this by a negative 1, it changes their values. Negative x minus y minus z equals 0 times negative 1 is still 0. Now, if I add them together, 2x minus x is just x. Negative 3y and negative y is negative 4y. z minus z, no more z's. 5 and 0 is 5. So now I have a linear equation in two variables. Now, I want to eliminate the same variable, but I have to choose two different equations. I use this combination. So now maybe I want to say, well, let's use this one. But I have to eliminate the same variable. So I can use this one with this, or I can use this one with the first one. It's really your choice. I'm going to choose these two right here, this combination. And I have to eliminate the z, because that's what I eliminated here. So to eliminate it, well, maybe I want to multiply this by a negative 2, because that would make this negative 2z. This is positive 2z. When I add them together, they're going to go away. So let's do that, negative 2x minus 2y minus 2z. Negative 2 times 0 is still 0. And then this equation, I can just rewrite it because I didn't multiply it by anything. And now I can add them together. Now, just by coincidence, the x's cancel out. That's actually a good thing. And sometimes that'll happen, but not every time. Negative 2x and 2x is 0x's. Negative 2y and y is negative 1y, or just negative y. Negative 2z and positive 2z, no more z's. And that was my goal to eliminate that variable. 0 and 2 is 2. So now I have negative y equals 2. So I have these two equations. But this one, because it's simplified, that x just happened to go away, I can just solve this for y and then substitute it into this equation and solve for x. I'll have x, I'll have y, and then I go back to the originals and have z. So let's think about this. What if that x didn't uh, cancel out? I would have two equations and two variables that we should be very familiar with working with. I could solve for one of the variables, plug it back in to find the other, and then we'll go back to the last equation. So let's solve this. Well, I don't want negative y. I want a positive y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. y equals negative 2. Now that I have this value, I'm just going to substitute it in for y. If y is negative 2, put negative 2 in there. x minus 4 times negative 2 equals 5. Well, this would be a positive 8. If I subtract 8 from both sides, I get x is negative 3. So x is negative 3 when y is negative 2. Now to find z, I have to work back. Now notice I'm working backwards. Once I solve one variable, I went back to this equation to solve for the other. Now that I have these two, I'm going to go back to the originals. And I can choose any one of them. But because I assess the coefficients, I look at this one and say, this one has the smallest coefficients. 
It's going to be the easiest to work with. So I'm going to find the z value by plugging in the x that I found and the y that I found. And I'm just going to bring it down here. Hopefully, you can follow my arrows. x is negative 3 plus y, which is negative 2, plus z equals 0. Negative 3 and negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus z equals 0. I can add 5 to both sides. And I get z equals 5. So if we think about what we have here, I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. I have x is my negative, or not an ordered pair, but an ordered set. Negative 3 is my x, negative 2 is my y, and 5 is my z. So I have my solution. And what I need to do to make sure it's right is to plug it into the other equations. It has to work in every equation to be a solution to the system. So I'm going to plug it in here. 2 times negative 3 would be negative 6. Negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 6. And z is 5. Well, negative 6 plus 6, that's 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. That's a true statement. So I know it works because I checked it in that equation. Let's do this one as well, because I want to make sure it works in that. And I could use the original, but I know this is the same because of that property of equality. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. y is a negative 2. 2 times 5, which is my z value, has to equal 2. Negative 6 and negative 2, same sign. I'm just going to combine them. Negative 8, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 and negative 8 is a positive 2. So it holds true in that equation as well. So it works in all three equations. I not only checked my work, but I double checked it. That's the key to these. And you can see it's a lot of work. It can be tedious at times. And if you're not finding what you're looking for, start over. Get a new sheet of paper, start working it over. Because it's really easy to make a single sign error. And that can send you down a path you don't want to go down. So if you're having trouble, don't hesitate to start over. Don't get frustrated. It can be tedious. You just got to persist and keep at it. All right, let's look at this one here. And again, I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is assess my coefficients. So if I look at my coefficients, 4, 1, 3, and 10, no common factors, um, nothing I can really do with this, 1, 1, 1, and 5, that's a, about as simple as it gets. Here I have 8, negative 2. 6, and 10. I recognize all these coefficients to have a factor of 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2, just get rid of a 2. So if I divide it out of this one, I get 4x. If I divide it out of that one, I get negative y. Divide it out of this, I get 3z. And divide a 2 out of that, I get 5. Now I'm going to reassess, because I simplified that equation. I see I have 4x, a negative y, a positive 3z equal to 5. If I look at these two, the left side of their equation, 4x, negative 1, and positive 3 are the same. They're the same line. But they have different intercepts. They have different values here. What that tells me is that these are parallel planes. Parallel planes are never going to intersect. So I can say no solution. Now, had I not recognized that, and actually went to solve it. Maybe I multiply this through by a negative and then add these two lines. It's going to give me a statement that says 0 equals 5. 0 equals 5 is not a true statement. 0 will never equal 5. And when you get this statement working through it algebraically, that tells you immediately that there's no solution. So by recognizing my coefficients were the same, but different constants, that tells me that these are parallel planes. They're never going to intersect. Inconsistent system, no solution. All right, let's take a look at this one here. I'm going to do the same thing here. I look at my coefficients. I just assess them. And I notice I have negative 6, 12, 3, and negative 6. They all uh, contain a factor of 3. So I'm just going to simplify it down here. I'm going to divide out uh, 3 from this one which would give me negative 2x. Divide a 3 out of this one, 4y. Divide a 3 out of this, 1z. Divide a 3 out of that, negative 2. Now, if we look at these, I see, oh, this one has a fraction. 
I don't want to deal with fractions. So I'm going to use the properties of equality. If I multiply everything by the LCD, since there's only one fraction, it's going to be that value, 2. I'm going to multiply this entire equation by 2. So 2 times this would be negative 2x. 2 times this would be positive 4y. 2 times this is going to be z. Half of 2 is 1, 1z. One and 2 times that is negative 2. Now if we do an, another assessment, because we simplified this line and we simplified this line, we notice that these are identical. They have the same coefficients equal to the same value. Now on the last example, they were equal to different values. Here it's the same. These are the same planes, which means we have infinite solutions. But is it the type of infinite solutions where they intersect uh, by a line? Or is it where all three of them are the same line? Well, maybe I can do something to these equations to find out which, in, which is it. Is it the equation of a line consistent? Or is it infinite solutions, the equation of a plane? Well, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do uh, a combination of the two lines. Let's eliminate a variable. I see this as negative z, and that's positive z. So maybe I want to eliminate the z. I could do the y's or the x's. But let's see what happens. 2x minus 2x, if I'm combining these two equations, I get 0x's. Negative 4y plus 4y, I get 0y's. Negative z plus z, I get 0z's. 2 minus 2 equals 0. So I get 0 plus 0 plus 0 on the left equals 0 on the right. This is a true statement. 0 is what it is. It is 0. And this would hold true no matter what, system, what lines I combine or use elimination on. I'm going to get a true statement every time. Because it's not dependent on the variables. They're all the same line. So this has infinite solutions. So infinite x, infinite y, infinite z. So we can write all real solutions. And that would be the answer. Here we have a consistent system of infinite solutions. All right, let's look at one last example. And it is an application. It says, at a farmer's market, you buy 4 pounds of bananas, 2 pounds of apples, and 3 pounds of grapes for $16.40. Your mom buys 5 pounds of bananas, 4 pounds of apples, and 2 pounds of grapes for $16.60. Your grandma buys two pounds of bananas, three pounds of apples, and one pound of grapes for $9.60. Find the price per pound for each type of fruit. Well, we know we're working with systems of linear equations in three variables. And we know we're asked to find the price per pound of each fruit. So let's assign a variables to the different types of fruits we have. We have bananas. I'm going to call those B. We have apples. I'll use that as A. And we have grapes. I'll use the variable of G. And hopefully, the store will provide a bag, because that's a lot of fruit we're buying, right? All right. So if we look and reread at the, what the question has to tell us, it says we're buying 4 pounds of bananas and 2 pounds of apples and 3 pounds of grape to get a total cost. And total is why I'm adding them of $16.40. Now, our mother is buying 5 pounds of bananas, 4 pounds of apples, and 2 pounds of grapes. And she's going to pay $16.60. Now, grandma, she doesn't buy too many bananas. She only buys 2 pounds of bananas. And she makes sure they're ripe. 3 pounds of apples, and 1 pound of grapes. And she's going to pay $9.60. So if we do a little assessment here, 4, 2, 3, and 16, 40, there's no common values. I can't reduce any of these equations. I'm ready to solve them. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave it at this point for you to solve this system of linear equations in three variables. Go ahead and try it. Good luck, and keep doing that homework. Thank you for watching.